Sperling with Sperling's Best Places. It's 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. On the, on the Atlantic coast, New York City, Florida, all those great places. And it's uh, 2 o'clock uh, in Denver, Central Time. And it's uh, noon here in Oregon. Uh, I'm broadcasting today from Portland, Oregon. And uh, we're having some nice weather, having a break in the rain. Hope the weather is good wherever you are and hope it stays that way this winter. Anyway, uh, I have a lots of things to talk about. And I see we're getting some comments in already. Uh, you folks on YouTube uh, can go ahead and enter your comments on that chat box there. And I'll be happy to try and get to those. So let's see what's going on. Um, you know, I've been thinking a lot lately about what makes the best place to live? And um, I'm feeling more and more that you can really add a lot to your life as far as enjoyment, as far as uh, quality of life uh, and health, and even the economy, your own economy, your own personal phys fiscal fitness. And you can really make a big change in your life by thinking about moving somewhere else. Um, it's been a very contentious election, to say the least. It's been very uh, divisive, divisive of, for the U.S. Um, with different polarizing groups of people. And that sort of reminds me that uh, different places around the country have different viewpoints. You may not feel comfortable where you are. You may be, um, you may not feel like these are your people. You might have a lawn sign that sticks out like a sore thumb. And in some cases, uh, there might be sort of a backlash against your feelings, uh, whether you're for Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. Um, you might, um, you might have some issues. People might have issues with the way you feel. And it you might feel more comfortable living somewhere else. Now, part of me feels that maybe this isn't the best thing for the country and we should all get together and work things out. And maybe that's the way it was in the older days. And maybe things as a country weren't so gridlocked and they weren't so contentious. People did not argue so much about this. But um, I do know that um, it can make a difference as far as you enjoying life and feeling like you're surrounded by people that are like-minded by yourself, like yourself. And so you might think about that. There are different parts of the country here on the West Coast. Uh, we tend to be more liberal, progressive. Um, I guess maybe liberal isn't maybe a dirty word like it was a few years ago uh, when they used progressive instead. Uh, other parts of the country, say more of the South, uh, the Midwest, and um, uh, <clears throat> the Rockies might be more conservative. And uh, they may be more of a place where you feel more comfortable. But on our site, Sperling's Best Places, uh, which is bestplaces.net, you're probably familiar with, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this. Uh, we do have um, how people lean politically, and it's by county, which is the most accurate information that we have out there. Um, some places have zip code information, or in some cases we can get zip code information, but really it's, it isn't that uh, accurate. But if you go to county, it gives you a pretty good idea. So we have um, the amount of people in the last presidential election, which surprisingly is very close to the way people are currently feeling. So if you go to bestplaces.net and look under, um, do we have a politics section? I forget, but if you go under voting, I believe it's under voting, and it will show you how people vote and even have independent uh, as well. So liberal, or so Republican, Democratic, and independent, it'll give you an idea about how people vote. We also have religious breakdown, which is might be important for you to um, be around people that uh, believe in the same beliefs that you have. Uh, we also have health information uh, because 
And I've been thinking about this more and more as well, because what happens is if you move to a place where people are healthier, you might be the same person, but you're going to take on a lot of their habits. So actually you're going to be healthier. Uh, if people are more likely to walk somewhere or you're be likely to be around uh, people that have active hobbies, uh, that sort of thing, like to be outdoors, you're, might like, you're more likely to do that yourself and more likely to eat healthy as well. So uh, take a look at our health section. And um, you might think um, moving might be not, it might be a really good thing for you to be healthier, happier, and even find a job uh, that suits you better uh, with um, because some places are definitely doing better than others in this sort of fragile economy that we have right now. You know, I know all the statistics are coming out that our economy is doing better, and it is, but some places are doing much better than others. And if you look at our unemployment rates that we have and job growth, we'll help you find those places that are doing better. And even if you have a job, if you live in a place that doesn't have a great economy, if the economy is kind of slow and doing poorly, you're going to be troubled. You're going to have uh, problems even if you have a job because they're going to be social services, parks could be closed the way they were during the recession uh, about five years ago. I think it was maybe in Arizona. Uh, state parks were closed. Uh, there could be uh, problems with potholes getting fixed. Um, social services like fire and police so all those things have an effect. I think a, a great economy is very important. And you know, one place that will always have really a pretty good economy and that is the state capitals. So look for state capitals and also college towns. They're gonna have a pretty good economy no matter what as well. So take a look at those places. So let's go ahead and look at some things, that, uh, some questions that we have here. So we've got one here from um, Leanne. Uh, she says, uh, where do you recommend my husband and I relocate to for retirement? Any, uh, we live in Florida, however, due to arthritis, I do better in comfortable, drier climates. Any re recommendations have good weather, things to do, culture, outdoor activities, et cetera? Good question. Culture, what you're gonna probably look for is a larger metro area. And if you're gonna look at a drier climate, you're gonna wanna look uh, in uh, let's see, the um, west of the Continental Divide, which is the Rockies. So going from Denver westward, you're going to have a drier climate. You know, I would look for, and you said someplace um, comfortable. Uh, you didn't say anything about affordable. Boise is a great spot um, that is doing very well. Uh, still affordable, even though it's growing quite a bit. Uh, the Coeur d'Alene area in Idaho. Spokane, I think is a great place. A smaller town, only around 37,000 or so. Walla Walla, Washington uh, is a really nice place. Anytime now on the, when you get to the West Coast, if you go to, um, the closer you are to the coast, the more you're gonna pay. And uh, so the, in the Valley of uh, Washington and Oregon, that's where Seattle, um, Portland, Olympia, Eugene, Salem, those places are, those are still going to be pretty affordable, but California is pretty crazy expensive. And if you are not in the Central Valley of California, now Central Valley, California are places like Fresno, Modesto, Stockton, Bakersfield. They are, let's say, still challenged by coming out of the recovery. And they're going to be really fairly inexpensive by California standards, but they're gonna be still have a relatively high unemployment and they're still gonna be um, coming out of the housing crunch. They got hit hard. So you might want to think twice about those places. So um, anyway, I hope that gives you some ideas to think about. Uh, Montana is a great place as well. It's gonna be dry up there as well. Wyoming is going to have less to do now in Wyoming. You're going to, uh, I'm sorry, Montana. You're going to look at Missoula or Great Falls. Missoula is kind of a pretty hip and happening spot these days. Uh, it's sort of like the 
I don't know, San Francisco of Montana, if that makes any sense whatsoever. But Montana is a uh, another university town, or Missoula is, and it's a pretty cool place. So check out those places and see if any of those would fit for you. Um, so let's go to the uh, chat. Uh, that is Linda says, uh, what are the up and coming cities on the East Coast? Uh, I moved from Georgia to Virginia and not happy about the crime. Yeah, crime can be an issue uh, in some places of, um, of the crime. Up and coming cities. Ooh, um, I would say uh, Portland, Maine is definitely up and coming. Uh, and um, I was in uh, Asheville, North Carolina. Everybody likes that place. Uh, it's a great retirement spot. And uh, some people have uh, referred to that as sort of the San Francisco of the East as well. Uh, and I guess I was pretty impressed about it, but I wasn't maybe, it didn't really live up to all the hype I've been hearing about it um, maybe recently. Uh, maybe I have to spend more time but uh, we do have some um, acquaintances that have moved there recently, some uh, hipsters from actually San Francisco. I'm looking forward to talking to, uh, to our friends that have moved there to get their take on it and see how that actually compares with some West Coast cities. And that'll be interesting. Um, Charlottesville, Virginia um, is a very interesting space. You're, uh, you're probably familiar with that, it's the home of the uh, University of Virginia. It's a very cool place, uh, pretty expensive. In fact, it was one of our first choices for uh, the best places to live when we wrote a book about 10 years ago. And in fact, um, folks were pretty unhappy uh, that they got picked as number one because the last thing they need is more growth. And uh, so uh, I had some meetings with them about that. It was interesting to talk to them about their sort of no growth proposal, this particular advocacy group. Uh, but Charlottesville is a really good spot. Um, let's see, where else? Uh, Charlotte uh, is getting uh, a lot of attention. I was not that much in love with it. I think it's a large industrial sort of like city. Uh, has It's a financial center, but I didn't think there was a lot of there there. Uh, Charleston, South Carolina is going to be crazy expensive because everybody wants to live there. It's it's very cool. So is Savannah, Georgia. Um, the outskirts of um, Atlanta are pretty nice. Uh, I think that's cool. I would also look at uh, like Nashville, Tennessee. I think that's pretty cool. There's a small town south of Nashville called Franklin. Franklin is a very cool area. So um, I would take a look at those places and uh, as a starting point. Let's see, um, what else do we have here on the site? Um, I moved from Georgeville. Uh, oh, Linda says uh, she's moved from Georgeville to Danville, Virginia. Uh, I'm concerned with the crime here. Yeah, uh, she's originally from Long Island, New York. So anyway, Linda, I hope that gives you some ideas uh, to think about. And um, But anyway, uh, Go ahead and write us with some more questions if you have those, or check out our website for some ideas. Let's see, we have one, uh, Felix uh, says he came across a web page, um, and he's very happy uh, he came across it. 56 years old, uh, divorced, uh, will be facing retirement in the near future. He's currently in Port St. Lucie, and uh, accepting a job, or he's thinking about staying in Port St. Lucie or accepting a job offer in Katy, Texas. And Katy is to the west of Texas, about 15 miles out, um, and he wants it to be his retirement place. So anyway, he wants a place that has safe culture, things to do, et cetera. Okay, good question, Felix. Here's the deal. Um, Katy, Texas is about oh, a half hour west of uh, Houston. Now, you know about Port, Port St. Lucie, uh, since that's where you are, but for folks that don't, um, it's a place on the east coast of Florida. Uh, it's a nice area. It's very affordable, um, and Florida is coming back from the housing uh, recession, which is good because it was like um, maybe the ground zero uh, for home prices cratering. Uh, it was very, very tough there for a while, but things are coming back, but haven't fully recovered, which is actually a good thing 
because that means prices can still be affordable compared to a lot of the country. Um, Katy, Texas is uh, basically a suburb of Houston. It's about, uh, like I said, about 25 miles west, uh, about a half hour west. And it's only about a half hour, by the way, to the Houston airport. So if you do any air travel, that's pretty good too, because a half hour drive to an airport is not a bad thing. And um, Katy is a small town, I think, what, about 17,000, if I remember right. Uh, and it's a um, suburb. Houston, interestingly, has gotten a lot of buzz lately. Uh, Houston is sort of a, a gritty cousin of Dallas, and it's um, on the east side of Texas, and you get a lot of sort of more of a southern influence. A lot of Texas, especially like El Paso, El Paso being way, way out in West Texas is almost like, well, the folks I've spoken to in, in El Paso when I was there visiting, they said they figure they're, they're almost in a different state, practically from the west of uh, from the from the rest of Texas. So um, when you get far that far out in El Paso, uh, that's really the the west. Um, but Houston uh, is has a lot to do with the south, and so that's why Houston. I happen to like barbecue a lot, and Houston's different than let's say Dallas, Austin. Uh, in that their barbecue doesn't have as much brisket. They have more pork, which is the influence of the rest of the South. So you've got a lot of, um, a lot of interesting things happening in uh, Houston because you have the South influence of the South and then you have the influence of the West as well. Um, the New York Times last year, they picked about, I think it was what, 47 places you must visit this year or something like that. They picked a number like 47, you know how that is, because it makes it sound like they carefully picked just the right number of places um, for you to look at. And in that list, I think number 12 or 15 or something like that was Houston, Texas. And they talked about the interesting things that, that are happening there. And it's true, there are lots of interesting things going on in Tex uh, Houston. Um, I think it was last year they had the King Tut exhibit was one of the few places in the US where that um, stayed for maybe a month or so uh, as one of the stops for its US tour. Um, there are some really interesting places. What are some of the some of the fun places I look for are things like ice houses and ice house was a place where uh, they actually had ice before they had refrigeration. And uh, people used to hang out uh, and have a, a cold drink or whatever at the ice house. Um, and it became kind of a roadhouse. And they still have a few of those around Houston, uh, which is kind of a, a cool thing as well. They have a great hip hop scene uh, for you that are into you know, more modern music. Um, it's a very compelling city. It does have a lot of challenges, I guess, as far as the climate. Uh, it can be hot uh, from the Gulf Coast, which is nearby. It can be sticky with humidity. Uh, it can, uh, you'll have uh, the remnants of hurricanes blowing through. You'll have tornadoes. There's a site called Houston, It's Worth It. Take a look at the site. Just uh, go into your browser and, and enter Houston, It's Worth It. There's a site done by some PR folks uh, in Houston, and they talk about all the things that Houston has, giant flying cockroaches, uh, tornadoes, hurricanes. I don't know if they mentioned earthquakes, uh, but they've got a lot of issues going on. Pollution. They talk about all of them. They put it right out front, and they say, you know what? Houston's got problems, but you know what? It's worth it because of all the great people that live in Houston. So check out Houston. It's worth it with a lot of interesting stories. I think Houston's definitely worth a look at. Oh, here's one more thing. So I was in the doctor getting a checkup. Um, and the guy I was speaking to, uh, the doctor, uh, had just done a residency in Houston. And he was from New York City. And he said how surprised he was uh, that Houston was actually a very interesting and fun place to live. And he and his wife were there for a couple of years, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, with their young kids, and he hadn't expected to. Um, so that's something I found very interesting. And by the way, that's I am a one of these. <laughs> I'm an annoying person uh, because I'm always 
trying to talk to people about where are you from? How long have you been, been here? How do you like the place where you are? Are you thinking about moving here? Where'd you come from? What's your background? And that my family will tell you that I'm always asking people about what's going on with them and maybe they can share their story so I can pass it along to you. But I found this really interesting from the doctor uh, who wasn't expecting to find Houston half as interesting as he did and thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, and that's being there for a couple of years and he's from New York, so go figure. So I think that's a real vote. Take a look at Houston, it's definitely worth it. So, um, but anyway, Felix, I urge you what you do is you go check it out yourself, spend a week there, uh, maybe more, take a look and hey, go to like Airbnb or VRBO or one of these places. What you can do is you can rent a place in a neighborhood that you're thinking about and actually get the feel for the neighborhood as well as the town. Uh, much better than staying in a hotel at the airport or someplace like that and uh, or downtown and um, you get a much more better chance to see what a particular neighborhood is, look, looks like. So let's see, do we have any other questions? No, if you folks are watching, and I know you guys are out there because I can see, uh, go ahead and get on the chat and ask me some questions. I'll be happy to answer them for you or I'll do, I'll give you my best, best shot at it. Okay. Let's see. Uh, someone says, um, uh, let's see, Elaine uh, writes and says, um, she has a, a question about our housing prices. Uh, we list Waynesville, North Carolina as having a housing market of 55% of the national average. But when she sh was shown homes by a realtor, she saw that homes were at least as high as homes in the area of Pre Pleasant Valley, New York which is listed 153%. That's a huge difference. Um, and then we're going, uh, there was a place in Georgia, uh, Dalong, 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 Dalongnega, Dalongnega, uh, as being higher than the national average. Um, these are all good questions. And she's wondering about housing prices. She found things that were different. I'm going to go ahead and look at these particular ones. Those sound way out of whack, and it's possible that our data is not synchronized up, but I also want to take a look at these. And um, Elaine, if you've got some specific information about home prices, uh, this is really useful. Uh, this lets me go ahead and uh, check out our, our site and look at our research again. Uh, maybe we have something. Uh, she wanted to know how we got our ho home prices. We get them from a bunch of different areas. One of the ways is that we tap into a database of sales that have actually been closed around the country. And these are ones that are recorded by a national title search company. And they compile these and look at the different uh, values and they uh, give us idea quarter by quarter uh, how many, um, how prices have changed. We also look at uh, national websites like Zillow and uh, Trulia um, and look at their prices as well as a comparison to see how our prices are matching up. We look at also values from the Census Bureau because even though they take a couple of years to ripple through, they do give us an idea comparatively how the places are and again, give us an idea on how our data looks um, compared to the other places. So with this information, I'm gonna go ahead and do some research this afternoon and if there's anything wrong, we'll go ahead and uh, get that fixed. And meanwhile, we'll look at this. You know, home prices are kind of funny um, because what is a median home price? Is if we look at recent sales data, those are just the homes that have been sold. And maybe people don't have as much money, so they're buying smaller homes. So there might be larger homes on the market that aren't being sold. Smaller homes are being sold and that's gonna skew the price as well. Now, not as much as the one, as, as Elaine had said, but it does give uh, a very flexible notion to what is uh, the actual home price. And so when you see median home prices listed, just be aware that it could be really different than what you're looking for, but at least it should give you a good comparison between places 
on which places are more expensive and which places are more affordable. So let's see what we have here. Um, Brock uh, says, uh, Sacramento is still plagued by a poor economy, unless you're in government. Yeah, that's true. What area of the country has the best opportunities for those not in high tech? Uh, boy, that is a good question because if, if you're not in high tech, that leads a lot. You know, the recent growth they're talking about in jobs these days, I'm afraid the recent growth in jobs, really about 90% of the growth in jobs have been in the service sector. Now, these are not what one would call particularly good jobs. These are ones that are in uh, restaurants. Uh, these are also um, uh, service industries, which are basically helping people face-to-face. Uh, -face. Uh, the more the type of jobs that are um, uh, food service and um, <clears throat> maid type of service as well, clerks, that sort of thing. So these are not going to be particularly good jobs that we are seeing out of the economy. I'm afraid really good jobs are harder to find. And I know the folks in hard hit areas, uh, folks that are, are having a difficult time in places where the manufacturing jobs have left. A lot of that is due, not as some people would tell you, uh, due to um, the jobs going offshore, but those jobs are just generally disappearing thanks to automation and other things. So, and they're replaced by these service jobs um, that are not going to be as, as well paying. So anyway, uh, what places uh, have the best opportunities for those um, not in high tech? Well, there's so many places that are. I would just point you to uh, look at our site and look at um, employment rates uh, where people, now when I say employment rates, I mean a low unemployment rate. Um, for a while, and you don't want something too low of an unemployment rate, by the way, if you have an unemployment rate that's too low, say below 3% or 4%, it, it makes things all out of whack. And what happens is you actually have problems filling jobs that you should be filling. For instance, in, in North Dakota, uh, the Williston uh, area, the oil fields, the shale fields, um, there was so much employment. It was uh, jobs were crazy. No one wanted to work as say a waitress or a school teacher uh, or those type of things. Everybody wanted to work in the oil fields where they could earn a lot of money. And it threw things completely out of whack. Uh, and the unemployment rate was down to one, two percent, yeah, one percent. And it was not uh, a comfortable place to live. Things are correcting and um, things are getting back to normal and that's going to be painful as well. So what you want to do is look for a moderate, you know, like a 4%, 5% unemployment rate uh, is healthy and uh, you'll still be able to find some things. And um, so which areas are, which areas are doing really well? Well, Portland, uh, the Portland metro area is doing exceedingly well as far as job creation. I think it's number one in the country. Uh, Seattle is also doing well. Um, let's see, on the Grand Rapids, Michigan is doing well as well. Uh, it has a lot of um, sort of uh, manufacturing jobs or at least small parts manufacturing. Uh, and anyway, take a look at our website and look around at employment rates. We have some new maps, by the way. We have some really great maps, uh, courtesy of Nick Arnold, who's our mapping guy. And he's designed some great maps that have uh, multiple colored tiles. You can look by county and see which of the areas that have the um, lowest unemployment. Uh, so that's really great for a quick search. Um, you just go in and you register with the site, and as you probably already have, and you'll be able to use these. By the way, here's something to know. Those kind of maps with the colored tiles, they're called coral pleth. Coral pleth maps, that's the word for the day. And uh, you'll find them really useful on bestplaces.net. So let's see what we have here. Um, and by the way, Brock, that's really good to know about uh, Sacramento having a poor economy. Um, 
even though that it, it is a um, uh, state capital, uh, Brock says that unless you're in, this, in the state government, uh, you're going to have problems being there um, and finding a job. So that is also sort of in central California as well, uh, even though it's getting more up in the foothills. Um, and like I said, central California does have a lot of challenges these days. Let's see what else we have here. <clears throat> Gail uh, says, how do you feel about retirement in Chicago? I used to live there and miss it very much. The restaurants are great and the festivals and the art fairs are wonderful. Very bored in Tucson. Good to know about Tucson. Tucson is one of the places that I recommend uh, more highly than most places in Arizona. Um, but yeah, compared to the vibrancy of a large metro area like um, Chicago, yeah, Tucson is going to suffer uh, quite a bit. Uh, if you're used to all of the really interesting cultural activities and the diverse group of people that uh, will have the different festivals and different shops, different foods, uh, all of that bringing a lot of color and texture to a metro area. Um, so well, how do you feel about retirement in Chicago? I think, I think yeah, that'd be great. Uh, of course, what people um, have an issue with uh, a lot in Chicago is the climate. And the climate can be challenging. Uh, people joke about there being two seasons. Uh, but Gail, you probably know you used to live there, so you know all about that. Ooh, I'm going to have a drink of water from my bestplaces.net, um, Sperling's Best Places mug. Ooh. Water just tastes better when it's in a uh, Sperling's Best Places mug. It's the best mug, best places. Ooh. Okay. Um, so anyway. Um, how do you feel about retirement? I think retirement would be great. Let me go ahead and give you my little thing about retirement. Retirement, a lot of people think, well, I'm going to retire and that's it. The way I feel is retirement is really sort of three separate, I don't know what you call them, sub lifestyles or whatever. Three different parts to retirement. Number one is if you're lucky enough to retire early, I guess I'm not because I'm still doing this, but I love it, so uh, whatever. Um, if you're lucky enough, uh, sometimes people uh, work for the state, they're policemen, uh, or they are a, um, uh, a firefighter, uh, maybe in the health field, a lot of those, or, or a, uh, in a school teacher uh, type of function. Um, they have their fortune enough to retire early and they sometimes go ahead and retire at the age of um, maybe 55 or so and other maybe the rest of us will retire at the age of Social Security maybe 65 66 the point is that these days people are so healthy at that age it's practically like the new 50 like it was maybe in the 1940s or 50s when people were 50, year, 50 years old, that's about the equivalent those days of maybe someone 65 today. People are healthy, they've got a lot of energy, they have resources. In fact, the most money you'll probably ever have in your life is maybe like around 60 years old. You've been working, you've saved up, um, you've, uh, you're at the peak of your earning, that sort of thing. That usually happens late 50s, 60 years old, and when you retire, you've still got your health, uh, you've got some resources, and now's your time to say, go around, um, take those world travels, uh, hike Nepal, uh, travel the US. You know, I don't even know why I'm talking about the rest of the world. Those are marvelous places to visit, but there's so much to visit here in the US. Uh, last year, my wife Gretchen and I took a uh, one month journey 10,000 miles driving all the way to the East Coast um, and through the Deep South and back through the Southwest again 
a wonderful journey, so much to see. Uh, we barely touched the surface. So you don't have to spend a fortune uh, to see a lot and to learn a lot. And so anyway, retirement, three places, three different segments of it. Number one, early, you retire early, you have energy, and why not go ahead and do a lot of exciting things? You might have a different home when you're, say, 60 years old than you do at, say, 75, because you know what? We're going to slow down. We might have health issues. Hopefully not, but we might have health issues when we get to be 70, 75. But a lot of times we do. We have health issues. We slow down. We don't get around as well as we used to. Might have problems with our knees. Uh, can't uh, move around the way we used to. And then that's another segment. We might want to then start thinking about moving away from the place in our early retirement to be closer to family uh, for their support and uh, their companionship. And we want to move to maybe a more metro area that has a bigger hospital, um, that has more services for us as we need it, and also has uh, more, more of a social fabric that we can use to um, help support us. For instance, we might not be able to drive, but we can have a, uh, um, bus, a metro uh, to get around. Uh, we have more taxis available, um, that sort of thing. Then finally, we get to the third stage of our retirement, which is sort of the area where we're really slowing down. We need constant care. Uh, we need someone to look after us. Uh, that's where family can come in or a caregiver. And again, a larger metro area has a lot more of those resources. So you'll, when you think about retirement, think about the first part where you want to get a lot and see a lot, get that out of the way, check off a lot of items on your bucket list, uh, and then maybe think about another place to live as you get older and start aging in place. Anyway, that's my, that's my uh, lecture on uh, retirement. So let me see what else we have. Um, Looking for a retirement home with good tax incentives, uh, along with being able to have our two old mixed black labs and two old indoor cats. Any ideas? Um, and that's what Judy says. Uh, she's in Fayetteville, Arkansas. <laughs> uh, and Judy is actually in uh, uh, Fayetteville, which is one of my favorite spots as far as being affordable, uh, a great spot for sort of retirement. Uh, again, uh, I really enjoyed being there uh, when we were there on our trip, uh, going through the Ozarks. And uh, Ozarks are a beautiful place, by the way. Uh, you should definitely take a trip through there. And um, so Judy is looking for a retirement home with good tax incentives. Depends on your tax structure. Now, if you go to our site, I hate to keep plugging the site, but it's got a lot of good information. We have a breakdown as far as the different kinds of taxes. The sales tax is important in some cases, um, property tax, and income tax. If, well, I'm not going to be making as much money in retirement. I'm not one of those people that has um, uh, a big uh, portfolio of uh, stocks and bonds <clears throat> that are going to be generating a lot of capital gains or spinning off dividends or anything like that. So I'm going to be living off my savings. And so I'm going to be looking for a state in retirement that's going to have, uh, I'm not going to worry so much about the income tax because I'm not going to have that much income, but I am going to be worried more about a property tax because I don't want to keep paying a lot of property tax and sales tax because of sales tax, I'm still going to have to spend money on the necessities of life. And when you're retired uh, and don't have that income coming in, those can be a lot more important. So in retirement, you'll probably want to have a lower sales tax, no sales tax, um, or you'll want to have a, um, a lower property tax as well. You don't want to be priced out of your home just by living in it. So take a look at those places. Um, beyond that, uh, I'd have to know, you know what sort of what your tax situation is. Like in Florida, for instance, 
Uh, they have a very advantageous tax system for some particular folks uh, in, in certain circumstances as well. Um, here on the West Coast, California has really high taxes. Oregon has no sales tax, uh, but on the other, uh, but a really high, pretty like a flat nine percent income tax. Washington is just the opposite. They have a lower um, proper. Uh, they have a sales tax, but no income tax. So sometimes people, if they get into a big windfall, they'll go ahead and move from Oregon to Washington to avoid the large income tax. So anyway, good luck with your search, um, Russell. Oh, Judy, I guess uh, Judy went ahead and wrote uh, the email th uh, at the bottom, says Russell. Um, let's see what else we have here. Uh, looks like we have some things on, on here. Let me look at this. Um, yeah, uh, Gail says, should we be, uh, Gail says, um, we're in our upper 70s and very healthy. Hey, that's great, Gail. Congratulations. Hope, you, hope that keeps continuing. Uh, that's a real big win. Um, senior housing available. Uh, good question. There are senior, there is senior housing available, uh, port, uh, or Chicago being as large as it is, has many different options. I can't stay on top of them, but there are some senior living websites uh, that you could look at that uh, have that kind of information that might be uh, interesting to you. I like the senior housing that is sometimes connected with the university. There are places that have that. It can be kind of pricey at times. Some can be more affordable, but um, maybe those are more for smaller places than there are for places like Chicago. Um, and should we be worried about the crime rate in Chicago? Um, yeah, uh, that's a really good question. I think crime is always something to be concerned about. Rarely is it a problem for a city overall. Uh, if the city's small, you can't sort of get away from the crime. So if there are some places that are small and have a high crime rate, say like Myrtle Beach, uh, South Carolina, you're going to have problems sort of getting away with that. And part of that is sort of unfair to Myrtle Beach, by the way, because a lot of it is um, because it's a des uh, destination town. It's a resort town that's going to have a lot of crime uh, from that as well. But the point that I'm making is if you're in a large place like Chicago, you can find places either out on the outskirts or places where the crime isn't going to touch you the way it is in other parts. Some places um, are sort of cursed with a high crime rate. They have a, uh, the crime is, I don't want to minimize this or trivialize this. Uh, it is, it, it's really devastating. And, but that crime is not spread throughout the entire city. Uh, there are places, of course, in Chicago, the majority of places in Chicago, where you are not touched with the kind of crime that we hear about in the, um, uh, in the news. So you'll probably find where those are. I think there, there are some sites that have, for certain cities, they have crime that's mapped out. Uh, they will map it out sort of day by day, how much crime there is. What you want to find is like a crime mapping I think it might be on Trulia. They have some interesting crime mapping where you can go ahead and see where the hot spots are over a period of time. Uh, that's useful, uh, but generally not available in too many smaller cities, just maybe a few of the larger cities. So, um, and as well, if you want to find a place more affordable in Chicago, you'll want to live more in the outskirts of Chicago as well. And um, that way you can go in take a drive in 30 minutes, maybe on a uh, weekend, enjoy the festivities. On the off times, you won't have to fight the commute or say during the daytime um, between rush hours and you can go enjoy Chicago. <clears throat> go back to your own home, which is on the outskirts, uh, leave the pressures of the big city behind and you'll pay a lower housing price as well for those places. Um, Naperville, by the way, uh, to the north um, has always been highly rated. I think that's a very nice area as well. 
Uh, you might look uh, to the north uh, in Lake County uh, of Chicago for some in interesting places. Uh, Kathy um, says, any insights on Boise as a retirement spot? Yeah. Um, yes, I think uh, Boise is a very nice place. Uh, it continues to grow really well. Uh, the last time I stopped there last year, um, we were driving and we we're going to stop there for the night. It was Sunday evening uh, in the, say, the late spring. And um, I was surprised how active a food scene they had going downtown. Now, it's a relatively small area downtown, but it looked as hopping and as cool and as interesting as a lot of places that I've seen around uh, the US. So good things are happening there. And we had a great, uh, that evening we had a great meal. Uh, it was over by the um, co-op uh, food store. I forget the name of it. They have a very cool co-op there uh, that is really sort of taking your hippie kind of co-op food store and imagine it growing up and becoming a lot more corporate and professional, but still re retaining a lot of its coolness. They have a really nice um, co-op there. This uh, restaurant I'm thinking of was right near there within walking distance. And uh, we had one of the best meals of our trip there. Uh, it was a great Italian place. And so I would say Boise is a very good spot. Um, it is still affordable by a lot of standards. And it is, um, <clears throat> if you like the outdoors, uh, it is a great outdoor city as well. And there's some high tech going on. High tech is sort of reset uh, after the sort of the tech wreck of 2000. But uh, there's uh, some semiconductor firms and such. Uh, there's a lot of good things happening in Boise. I would say definitely check that out. Um, Debbie says, um, when will we be out uh, updating our data to 2015? Yes. Um, now, when we say 2015, that's the last set of data available from the Census Bureau. They lag behind by a year or two. So sometimes when we say we have 2015 data, that's actually current data this year, and it'll be a full another year before that data is available, processed, and be able to put on their website. So yeah, we're coming out with a new, uh, we have everything done except our final crime risk indices, which I'm finishing up, and we're going to be putting that on in the next couple of weeks. So be sure to look for that. Um, anyway, new set of data. It'll be really exciting, and we're going to be putting a bunch of charts on as well that I think is going to be very insightful as far as the data. Um, so we have some interesting things. By the way, we have a new compare feature on our website. It allows you to compare two cities side by side. Uh, it's a lot more powerful than it has been before. It's easier to use and provides a lot of insight because you're able to, you're able to compare all these cities side by side, head to head, uh, in so many different categories that it points up the differences between the different different spots. So I find it very useful, and I know that you will too. So let's see. Um, um, let's see. Sorry, a little dead air here. Sorry. Um, Ron uh, says he'd like to retire near family in the New York metro area and have been researching Wilmington, Delaware due to the proximity and retirement tax benefits. Um, he and his wife are city people, and they're looking at a specific zip code. What are your insights and opinions? Uh, Wilmington is one of those places that's kind of gritty. Uh, we were just looking at that. I, I was doing a project with uh, AARP, uh, providing some data and insights on different places to live. One of the places we looked at was Wilmington. It does have a pretty high crime score, and it is pretty gritty. I would say look at that in mind. Uh, with the um, with the idea of the crime being higher than normal, uh, which is interesting, but like I said, it is not a deal breaker. Just be aware of that. Uh, I would look for some of the other things. Uh, take a look at the housing prices. Make sure the housing prices are rising. 
by the way, you're when you're looking for a new place, you're basically like a Sherlock Holmes or whatever. You're looking for clues that will tell you whether a place is going to remain a great place to live uh, and whether it's healthy uh, as far as a, <clears throat> the economy, as, as far as the health uh, for yourself and that sort of thing. So one of the things you wanna look at to make sure that a place is doing well is you wanna look at, make sure that the housing prices are rising. You wanna make sure that the population is increasing because really everybody is voting with their feet. And if young people are leaving, by the way, also look at the percentages of uh, population of young people. Is that increasing or declining? Is the population increasing or declining? Um, and that will tell you something as well. In other words, if people are leaving, the population's going down, something is seriously wrong. And I would, think twice or three times about going to a place where the population is going down. Similarly, if housing prices are sort of stuck, uh, they're not doing very well, um, that also is an issue because that means people are not moving there to bid up the housing prices. So you want some place that's affordable, but on the other place, you don't want to be stuck with a place if you're going to have to move uh, where you're not going to be able to make back your uh, money that you put into your place. Um, and you wanna be part of a, a vibrant kind of scene where things are growing. Now, there can be a problem if you move to a place where it's too popular, places like Boulder, Colorado, Portland these days is growing faster than any other place in the United States at this point, any other metro area. So it's challenging to find a place that's affordable on, on one hand, but on the other hand, lots of things are happening. So when you're a sleuth, let's say you wanna look at the unemployment rate to make sure the unemployment rate is not high. Hopefully that is going down uh, so that uh, you don't, and look at the job growth numbers. Again, we have that on bestplaces.net. Make sure the population is growing up at a reasonable rate. You don't want it to go crazy, out of control, high. Same thing with housing prices. Look at housing appreciation as well as just the total price of the house. Um, let's see what else. You wanna look at say young people, if they're uh, also maybe education level, you want educated people to be moving to the place that you're interested in. And that's important because um, those people are going to sort of power the economy and make interesting things happen. Uh, and if um, those, if, if smart people are moving where you want to move to, then they're probably making a good decision as well. They've done their research just like you're doing, and uh, maybe they're picking that place, uh, and we can learn something from them. So let me see. Let's see what else we have. Oh, by the way, we do have information on specific zip codes. Uh, so if you go to, like, um, if you want to look up 198, 06 uh, that Ron is thinking about in Wilmington, uh, you can learn all about that and get a profile of that and compare those to other places um, in the uh, Wilmington area. Uh, so Linda says, I'm wondering if you can help me find a safe place to live in the U.S., presumably outside of California, on about $36,000 a year. Uh, I've been laid off and need to move out of California to keep myself afloat. Boy, that's that's true. California is one of the most expensive states. I would say probably the most expensive state to live in in the U.S. at this point. I work in the medical profession in an ancillary capacity. Um, alternatively, where are the best places to live if looking for a job uh, in medical slash drug research and development? Um, boy, that's a good question. I don't know about medical research or, um, or development uh, offhand. Um, you know, Indianapolis, Indiana uh, has a lot of uh, pharmaceutical companies. Uh, you might wanna check uh, in Indianapolis and uh, I think maybe Pfizer is headquartered there. Uh, Indianapolis has some very good things happening with it. It does, it's sort of, almost sort of a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde kind of thing where it has two faces. 
Uh, a lot of the Midwest is sort of struggling. It does have, um, it does have issues uh, as far as crime, I believe. But on the other hand, um, in fact, I think I was comparing Indianapolis with um, Indianapolis with Chicago. And when you look at the overall crime rate, not the murder rate, which gets all the attention in Chicago, but the overall violent crime rate, Indianapolis is higher than Chicago. So, um, but there are a lot of good things happening in places like Indianapolis, Omaha, and other places in the Midwest that are coming back nicely from the recession. Um, so $36,000 a year, that's a tough one. Uh, you're probably going to have to look at maybe places like in the uh, Midwest uh, that are going to be affordable. Um, it's going to be hard to say any place el else in the U.S. is going to give you a lot of bang for your buck. So look in the South, the Midwest, um, and maybe Texas. I like El Paso. I think El Paso is a really neat town. I think it, it's growing well. Uh, it's coming back from sort of a mini recession that they had. Um, but El Paso, I think, is nice. Take a look at that. Um, let's see what else, as far as comments we have. Um, let's see, nothing new there. Um, someone's thinking about relocating to Arizona from California. Uh, housing costs are rising in California and it's just getting ridiculous. Boy, that's true. Like I said, California is crazy expensive. And um, so I would, uh, I like Tucson. Tucson has some of the cleanest air in the U.S. for people that have respiratory illnesses. Tucson has one, some of the best air of any uh, metro area in the United States. Um, Phoenix is crazy hot. Uh, I mean, it's so hot that people end up leaving for the summer for a month or two and going to San Diego uh, just to enjoy the cooler temperatures. Um, I would say Phoenix might be a little bit too large um, and built up for my tastes, uh, but I would look at uh, definitely uh, take a look at Tucson. Um, Green Valley, Arizona, which I think it might be a suburb of, um, I have a, a friend who's located down in Green Valley, retired there, and uh, he really knows what's going on. Fred Brock, if you're listening, um, uh, he's retired there, and so that certainly gets a vote uh, from a very smart person on where he chose to retire. Um, Let's see, what else do we have? I think we're pretty well winding up. But I would say, I think we've answered a lot of questions. Um, looking forward to seeing what the uh, results are of the, of the election coming up. I'm looking forward to the World Series game tonight. It's uh, game six, and we'll see if the Cubs can hang on uh, for another day and uh, force a game seven. That'll be exciting. Um, Anyway, I hope wherever you are, you're having a good, um, I hope you're having a, a, a good day, uh, a good month wherever you are. I think I'm feeling something in the air at this point. Maybe it's the election, maybe it's the economy, but something seems to be happening. I'm getting a lot of sort of feedback from different sources that the economy seems to be a little stalled, which is kind of troubling. Uh, I hope wherever you are, you, your own personal situation is good. Uh, but if you have any sort of reports on where you are that you find it particularly interesting about what you found, about where you live and what your quality of life is, I'd love to hear about it. Shoot me an email on our site or write something on our website. Write comments that we have. Uh, you are ground zero wherever you live. You're the expert where you live. I'd love to hear from you and how you like wherever you are. So this is Bert Sperling. I'm going to go ahead and sign off for this month, and we'll see you next month. Uh, it'll be right between, right after uh, Thanksgiving, and hope you have a great Thanksgiving. And um, check out our website, bestplaces.net. We have some new features, and uh, it always has some interesting stuff to have. And please send in those comments. So thanks very much, everyone. Bye-bye.